Hello and welcome to tutorial number 5, first takeoff and landing. I will recommend and indeed I take it as a given you have already some first experience in flying around in the UE. Or even better, you watched tutorial number 4 and trained with the Airwork mission. Takeoff, landing and hover is a pretty complicated task and on a PC is it even harder than in real life. On the PC you miss the helicopter's most crucial instrument, the lower end of his back. Many try to compensate that by using the upper end extensively. But overthinking is more an obstacle than a help when it comes to fly a helicopter. This is a step by step explanation and fast progress will be guaranteed if you follow the advice given seriously. Watching tutorial 1 to 4 in advance will also be a good idea. It will be a good idea to start at the beginning of the runway, right on the center line. What we need is at least one forward reference and when possible some references to the left and to the right. In this case the runway center line and some taxi center lines around us. Runway or taxiway signs and ground lightning are also good reference points. In comparison with an airplane a helicopter won't fly on its own. But helicopters are not that unstable as you may think. Helicopters have horizontal and vertical stabilizers like airplanes. The spinning rotor disc of a helicopter is nothing else than a giant gyroscope. And together with the bending of the rotor blades when pushed up by lift, it is similar to a child's spinning top. With the stabilizer bar and his weights on both ends, the UH-1 has two gyros. The pilot's cyclic control is linked to the stabilizer bar and the bar is connected to the rotor blades. This provides a damping effect that enables the pilot to control the helicopter. In an airplane control inputs linked to relatively small ailerons. In a helicopter the complete rotor blade is involved. Not only one of them, all rotor blades. And thereby the entire rotor disc reacts to the pilot inputs. Control inputs produce much more force easily overcoming the stabilizing gyro effect of the rotor disc. So in fact the pilot inputs are the disturbance factor. Two things to remember. Do things slowly and only as much as needed and you do it best when you do nothing at all. Adjust your cyclic to the UE's center of gravity explained in the previous tutorial and let's start with step number one. Gently begin to raise collective. The torque gauge is thereby a useful reference. Below 20 psi nothing will happen at all. Above 20 psi you should look outside to the reference point, in that case the numbers 2, 1 on the runway. Continue to raise collective until the aircraft starts moving. Keep it there. Apply the left pedal as necessary to keep the nose of the helicopter aligned with the center line. No yaw to the right and not to the left. Your helicopter is now light on the skids, still on the ground but almost taking off. From that point on you may turn the helicopter by intention with the pedals from one reference point to another. 45 or 90 degrees, it doesn't matter. But you should determine the rate of turn in advance. Control the aircraft. Do not take the aircraft will as your own. Play with the pedals. Initiate slow turns and faster ones, but do it controlled. Don't worry, in that stage it is nearly impossible to crash the helicopter even with extensive movements on the cyclic. This is a pretty riskless way to get comfortable with the pedals. Think about it. You do it best when... Let's go back to the center line. With fuel top off and without any weapons the UE is light on the skids at about 25 psi. And of course we can also turn to the other side. If you feel comfortable in doing this, move the helicopter sidewards using the cyclic stick and hold heading with pedals. 
This is step 2, initiating a sidewards move and assisting with pedals. Because of the friction between skids and the ground, you need more cyclic movement than in an actual hover. But this task is about coordination and not hovering. In step number 3, we lower the collective and pull them again but a little bit faster, up to 25 psi torque. So you have to counteract more quickly with the pedals. If you pull a little bit too much, the helicopter will start to move forward. Forward is the only direction allowed, and as long as you keep the nose straight, this is no big deal. Let him slide forward and gently lower the collective a little bit or apply a little bit more aft cyclic. Aft cyclic or the increased friction will stop the movement. If you start over controlling on the cyclic, remember, you do it best when you do nothing at all. In the worst case, let him go. In any direction, expect backward. Count to two and then gently react to that movement. Step number four. We initiate a forward slide by pulling collective, get the aircraft light on the skids, but not taking off and apply just a little bit forward cyclic. With the pedals we maneuver the helicopter around the runway center line, like on a slalom course. Don't get too fast and only move forward, not sideward, by applying sideward cyclic pressure. Sliding sideward on the ground in a helicopter is always a bad idea. There is the potential danger of a rollover. With an increase in ground speed comes a nose-up tendency. More lift produced by the rotor system wants to lift the helicopter up in the air just like an airplane. But nose-up equals back cyclic and slows the helicopter down. The improvement gets lost and he settles back to the ground. Because I doesn't want to take off, I also counteract with gently aft cyclic. How does it look like from the outside? The helicopter never loses contact with the runway. If you're able to control these maneuvers, we go forward to step 5. If you pull a little bit more collective, the acceleration rate will be even higher. But still don't get takeoff by pulling collective. It is crucial to develop the sensitiveness on the controls, because hovering is all about being sensitive. Remember, the rotor disc is a stabilizing gyro. If you do not apply additional inputs, he keeps going in one direction. Prevent a forward rollover with a little bit aft cyclic. More aft cyclic slows the aircraft down and it will stop again. It is essential to stay focused about 15 to 20 feet in front of your helicopter during all of these maneuvers. Don't stick on the instruments. You may practice this a few times before you move forward to step number 6. This time you accelerate by sliding on the ground but instead slowing down and lowering the collective, you apply a little bit more collective and the UE will take off. If you can stabilize the flight, unavoidable, we come to stage 7 a controlled landing. First we reduce our airspeed by gently applying aft cyclic. Keep your eyes outside. The UE will climb even more, but that's no problem. At this point everything depends on that you did not have applied too much collective for takeoff. Below 30 knots airspeed, your rate of climb should be close to zero. If not, lower the collective just below 25 psi torque. The helicopter begins to settle.
Under any circumstances, keep your forward movement. Avoid a full stop. And much worse, an aft movement of the aircraft. At about 50 to 20 feet above the runway, with aft cyclic, you reduce airspeed even more. But still keep it moving. If the closure rate is too high, apply gently collective to cushion the touchdown. Keep the nose straight with the pedals. And when on the ground, reduce collective below 25 psi and the friction between runway and skids will slow you down to a full stop. If you do everything nice and gently without a hurry, you will be definitely able to take off and land your UE in a controlled manner. Back to light on the skids and turn around in the opposite direction. Let's do it again. I'm gently accelerating on the ground, pulling 1 or 2% more power and take off. This time we climb only 30 to 50 feet and after 3 or 4 seconds stabilized flight we initiate our landing procedure. If you follow this advice seriously, your skills will improve fast. You will accelerate with slower rates and you will control slow down even more before touchdown. In the next tutorial, we react to a wish out of the YouTube community and make a huge step forward to combat style takeoffs and landings.
please support us by giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have comments or questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and always happy landings.